What's up, guys? Welcome to Thursday afternoon. So today, I'm sure you saw, we are going to be doing the uh, brand new to branded. And so this is a lot more of our back end process of what we do, because as we talk about identity shifting brands, um, I feel like there's so much nuance in it, but we just kind of want to give a bit of the higher level overview of what we do and why branded customers is the end game here. Well, let's get into it. Can I share your screen? Let's also go focus mode. All right. Okay, he has really like kind of step three of the tribe method, and that's increasing and increasing similarity and intensifying that collective identity. So that's where we say a brand new to branded. It's how you can really indoctrinate someone into that collective identity so that they want to wear and share the brand. The example, Bruce Taylor right here, he went from brand new to branded in 112 days of being in the program. And that's really when we knew we got something here. And that the whole point is, if we can get to this level, how everything else seems to fall into place. So as we talked about, uh, as tribe leaders and like leading a tribe brand, the goal is not just the money, right? Like if we're just looking, I feel like we always kind of lead with that 2CC award, but mostly for the credibility. Because I mean, with a crazy enough marketing or a crazy enough ad spend, like you can get there. It's really about, you know, how well you can keep it and that's the thing is we don't want just something that, you know, ramp it up and then just kind of like let it collapse. The whole point of these kinds of brands is that it can just keep getting bigger and better, right? It kind of grows from the inside because it's not just you pushing a product. It's a whole bunch of people who are sharing and wearing and associating and identifying with the brand. Yeah, because we were saying last week, once you have that identity, then if it's all about what we're doing together, then the products just become an extension of that identity, they become tools in the mission. So that's where you can really milk people for more money. And it's not about that. It's just, that's the reflection of the work that you put in because then they want to. Identity is how we make decisions and identity is how we express ourselves. The clothes we wear, the way we wear them, the things we say, these are all identity based. So when we start there, then all of these things become easier to influence. And only to say, like, it helps them get results. You're building a course or a membership or whatever so you can get people results. So that's ultimately the currency we're going for is getting people results. But in order to do that, then we need to influence their behavior. We need to get them engaged in the content community. And that's where we really associate this collective identity so that we can get them taking the right actions. And once they are embodying that identity, then it's more likely they're going to buy other things. It's more likely they're going to want to uh, wear the T-shirt wear the hat, buy the mug, get the tattoo, all those other fun things. And that's what we're going to speak to you today. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously it's having branded customers. And this is a big thing for us for years because we didn't want to be branding. We still are. We don't feel like branding guys. Um, and then you see like Sir Richard Branson talk about how the number one thing is the brand. And it's like, yeah, but what is branding? They say branding is like molding fog, right? So it's like, Branding is how it affects every part of the product, the experience. Um, and we just kind of really lean on that of if they brand their bodies, whether it's a tattoo or a shirt, it just means that we've created enough meaning and belonging in their lives that they associate their identity to this brand identity. And that's ultimately the goal, meaning and belonging. So yeah, branded customers is when the customer and the brand share an identity, right? So we talked a lot in the past about being a me brand. You know, Funk was very much a me brand. It was still Funk Roberts Fitness Inc. Um, and a lot of people in fitness are a me brand because they're like, this is what I've done. And I feel like that's just kind of how the model was, right? You have to look credible. So you have to be that kind of person where it's like, look what I've done, look at me. And as important as that, that is in like the hero journey side of things, then it's really, they're not going to share that identity because there's no way that they can feel like they are Funk Roberts too. Like that's just, that's not their name. That's not their identity. And so you have to really look at, well, what is, how can we make it so that they share an identity, right? And so, so much so that they wear and share the brand and sometimes even permanently brand it to their body. 
That is our goal. We just know that we've done our process well enough if people want to be branded to this brand. So when we look at Funks, then you know we saw Scott the other day right here um, wearing the Alpha Dad and and the O4DA hat right here. And so you know he's smiling, he's happy, he's paying to wear and share and represent this identity because he's earned it. I mean, he came in a little fat, now he's got sick abs, um, but he's just very much embodied what it means to be an over 40 alpha. And this wouldn't have been the same if it was just still Funk Roberts, right? Uh, and then of course we have Brucey here getting the over 40 brotherhood tattooed across his entire arm. Uh, and from there, then we've just added more meaning, more belonging. He's, he is our team captain. Um, and he is very much ingratiated in this whole thing. So this thing has just become bigger than us and funk because now it's really about all these people. And then you can see even just like the, the swag on the right, then it just becomes what we call part of our similarity systems which is just really good. We'll get into the science behind it, but really good for business. And that alpha dad is technically a new identity that Funk launched into the community because once the over 40 alpha identity is already strong and living and breathing into the ecosystem, then, I mean, being a dad is a big part of uh, the narrative. That's Funk's story, but it's also an alpha's job is to protect, procreate, and provide. provide. And so a lot of that is about family. And so right before Father's Day, then Funk launched an alpha dad line. And we can see people want to express this part because they already feel alpha and they already are a dad. So by creating a way to express their identity as an alpha dad, then you can see Scott bought the shirt, Scott bought the mug, Scott probably would have bought a bunch of other things if it was an option and he still might. But now we have nuanced identities inside. I mean, there's also, once you get past month 12 of over 40 alpha, then there's over 40 alpha savage. And then in year three, it's uh, over 40 alpha uh, supreme king, alpha supreme king. Yeah. So, so you can have layers to it. It's just about getting that first identity shift. So they understand what it is, who we are, where we're going, what we're doing. And then once they embody it, then people want to buy the merch. So with Russell, then he came to us shortly after we launched funks and he said, I want the funk Roberts. And so uh, he had DVDs just like this that he would actually ship out in a DVD set. And we're talking only a few years ago. And so we're like, dude, what, what are you doing? And so we just revamped the product into an online membership, following our model with a proper transformation journey and just kind of like, let it see. This was also early days. So we didn't even have a lot of the things that we do now, but we could see they just started embodying right? Just increasing similarity. So we just created a brand, we created the narrative of what it means to be here um, and start implementing some of our identity shifting, our similarity systems. And you can see they start, so, you know, like there's, a, there's power in seeing the uniformity. Um, and then even uh, we have the screenshot, right? Like Scott talking about sweatshirts, sweatpants, hoodies, coffee cups, everything, all wear it. Right. And then down here, Frederick saying actually considered getting a tattoo of the red fist at the end of this. So you can see like when you get the brand right and you have enough meaning and belonging, but you create the similarity systems that, that we implement. Uh, I feel like this is the most powerful. This is this is how you know you've kind of made it. The money is good. But when you have similarity, when you have a tribe of brand customers, I mean, that's how you know you made it. This is Dom. He was a, a bar. He is a barber. And so when we started working with him, then it was Black Hills Barber, which is just this is where he lives. And he's a barber. So I mean, there's really no creativity behind that. There's really no narrative behind that brand. And so we did our magic. He came up with this whole sixth throne. So that's after we delivered the playbook. He went and made built, it his own, built it out, which is the whole point. So we don't exactly know exactly like what the sixth throne means. Now it's got a story behind it and enough so that we can see Dylan down here. He was one of their newer barbers and it was a place in his life where he was lost and looking for some sort of connection, fulfillment. This was his entrance into being a barber. And so this community narrative gave him so much meaning and belonging that he felt like he should get a tattoo to his body. And now they're selling merch. They sell products. It's all about crafting your crown. That's something we uh, designed around. It's not just a haircut. You know, it's something that you represent every day. Your hair is yourself. And so once they understand like kind of the meaning behind a haircut, 
then you can create a brand around it. And once you have that, then you create merch and tattoos and all that fun stuff. So we have a firm belief that the future belongs to those who can unify strangers on the internet. And we've talked a lot about this in terms of like, you know, the trends, the macro trends of where the world is gone and is going. Like people are just very disconnected these days. You know, the wealthier people get, the more disconnected they are. They go from like that favela style into like mansions, secluded, the more internet uh, than the more connected we are, but yet more disconnected because we spend so much time by ourselves. And so people are just really missing this sense of unity, this sense of belonging, this sense of being a part of something. And so if you can unify strangers on the internet, we firmly believe that you don't have to worry about where your next dollar is coming from or launching a bunch of new products or always just being on the ball with everything. You just have to be a good tribe leader. And so when we're talking about tribe leaders with branded customers, then... Um, Again, just trying to sell you on the idea of it. I mean, having a tribe of people paying them every month for their process, we just see that so many people have these one-off products, products, products. And so every day, every week, every month, it's how do I sell more products? And they like write emails and products and just always trying to hustle. And so turning that into one sequence, a transformation journey that gives people a system for them to follow where they just pay monthly to be a part of this thing way better. You know, then you're just trying to get people into this one flow versus this sporadic, who are they? What do they want? Products, 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 products. They also have products being pulled out of them, right? So um, with Funk, then we have the three years of content, but then he's also got, it's like, well, they want, you know, variety. So he has the kettlebell version. And so, you know, phase 32 is, is a kettlebell version, but that also sells his kettlebell Spartan Academy. Um, and then the bands that he just launched, he has his own funk bands. And so, especially if you have injuries or things like that, right. People who are traveling, that's a big thing. So then he put together this, like what to eat and how to work out this thing for, you know, hotel rooms basically. And so it's less about like, what do people want in building these products and more about people demanding and just pulling it out of you. So a pretty sweet reframe. It makes life way easier. And then of course, merch sales, right? So people want to express. And so, yeah, we've got the alpha dad now, but over 40 alpha, we've got that brand, we've got what it means. And so, yeah, Funk has, this is him doing his yoga at the cottage last week on his over 40 alpha mat. And so he's, I mean, he's just well-branded, but he lives the identity, right? He, he wears, he wears the shirt, he wears the hat, he makes a new hat and shirt for like every color every occasion and he brands himself for video trainings so that people who are watching that and into interacting with him they're already part of the brand so they're like oh i need that too and so he's just showing this is what you know this is what a tribe leader looks like and so other tribe leaders like oh okay i should have that shirt too And then they attract more opportunities because of the magic they created. So this is Funk on stage talking about tribe secrets, which has been done many times. We've actually had two people outside of ourselves promoting and presenting our process, which is pretty special. So the secret lies in creating similarity between strangers. We've hammered that point home. Hopefully. So here's the science because we're all about tribal psychology. It increases perceptions of trust, intimacy, and understanding between individuals. Obviously, that's huge for getting paid and getting paid often. The limbic resonance activates dopamine and oxytocin. These are cuddle chemicals, and they reinforce pro-social bonding behaviors because we're not trying to create a community so that you can talk at your people. We're trying to create something that people want to engage with each other. So it's not just all about you and your admins prodding questions and selling stuff. It's a, it's a true tribe where people actually get benefit and connection out of each other. So that's where we need pro-social bonding behaviors. And when you activate the limbic part of the brain, then that's where all of the motivation and decision-making happens. You can't drive someone to take any action without that limbic response. They need to have motivation in order to take action because the brain wants comfort, not change. So that's where similarity is like the easiest inroad in to getting that kind of trust, intimacy, and motivation. And then from there, we can increase cooperativeness and willingness to defend others by 25 to 50% compared to non-unified control groups. So 
people just naturally have pride in their own in-groups over other in-groups. So there's just like a natural sense of self-esteem and ego by being a part of this thing, because that's just how we're wired for tribal belonging. So if you have uh, people defending each other in the group, then they're just going to keep paying and staying to defend their own identity. But also sameness equals safety. And the brain is just wired for safety. And it has been since the tribe days. That's why this is tribal psychology. If you can build sameness, you can build safety. And when you have psychological safety, then people will post more, they will feel involved more. Um, and this whole thing just leads to them getting more results, getting more engagement, getting more active and associating their life to this thing. Because you know, if they don't do this, the online course completion rate is like 6%. So you have all of these customers paying you one time and then never again, because they never got a result because they never actually did the thing. Or people like buying a book or a PDF and then maybe they'll read it, but will they continue to use it? And do they continually have this emotion to this identity every single day, reinforcing it, right? And so saying this equals safety. Boom. So this is the four step similarity system. We start with the identity shift. So it's what is their current identity? What is their new identity? And then the product experience is how you shift them into it. Like the course, the membership modules, the PDFs, all of these things are designed to get them from who they are to who they want to be. And then from there, once you get that sale, then you need to indoctrinate them into that collective identity. So people need to be told how to belong to a new social group because getting kicked out of a group, getting kicked out of the tribe back in the day was equivalent to death. So to our subconscious mind, we need acceptance into the tribe. We need to be told how to belong. So we don't say the wrong thing. We don't do the wrong thing. And if people don't know what to post or how to post, they don't post. So we need to indoctrinate them into that collective identity also because we need people to take action. So it's their current identity that lacks the skills, the motivation, the strength, the knowledge, the money, all of these things in order to get the result they want. That's why they paid you in the first place. So we need to get them into a new identity. So they're operating from that place of I can, not that place of I can't. And then from there, we can constantly reinforce that collective identity. So that's all the, um, the posts in the community, and that's all, it's based on that identity. It's not based on like some random thing. It's all tied back to who we are and what we're doing. And it's the slang you're using, it's the symbolism you're using, it's the rituals we're doing, all of that good stuff. And then from there, then since the narrative is constantly hammering this new identity, then by the time they embody it themselves, we naturally want to express our collective identity because that's just how we're wired. It's how we find other people who are similar to ourselves because we can't go around telling everybody this is who I am. These are my interests and my passions, my hobbies. And I like this sports team. I like this music. You don't just say these things. You wear these things. You express yourself and the right people are attracted to you because that's just how we are wired. So you need a way to express your identity. And now that you have this new collective identity, you're going to want a way to express that. And merch is just the easiest and the funnest way to do it, but it also opens up a new revenue stream. And it's so fun. Funk just launches, like he'll say something and then you can take that thing and put on a t-shirt and now they feel closer to funk and it becomes slang of the identity. It's not just something funk says, it's something we say. Yeah, so let's just get into that first one because you can't do anything else until this part is figured out. Um, and that is the identity shift, right? So we have this written right into our presentation name, brand new to Brandon. Right. And this actually took us years to get down into, um, even though it just looks so simple. And in hindsight, everything always is like right there and simple, but um, can't read the label from inside the bottle. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, your entire process lives between this line. And then when we look at how that works, when we started working with Funk, it was over 40 shred. Right. We needed to first make it identity based. What is the identity shift? First and foremost, who do they want to be? Where are we going? Right. How do we make it? a uh, together brand, an us brand, create that we-ness. And so it's like, okay, over 40 alpha, right? But then it's also really looking at the market and your story about, well, like, who are they? Where are they right now? And so, you know, just overweight dads, that's overweight dad, over 40, over 40 alpha. I mean, that's kind of in its simplest. We could also just go like former athlete. Like there's a few ways we can kind of spin this depending on the market, but um, yeah, who are they and, and who they want to be? at its simplest, and then your unique process lives in the middle. 
And then you can see how our process is like, the thing is the thing. So how at brand new, when they're an overweight dad, how do we make them branded with the over 40 alpha identity? And then our process lives within that line. And so doing our process for the process has been quite the process. Very meta. Yeah, or process if you're American. And so once we have that, then it's just continually moving them through to embodying this new identity and reinforcing the identity and expressing the identity. So then it's, this is where we're saying like, it's when the customer and the brand share an identity. So that's why everything is identity-based branding. So we came up with over 40 alpha and then how do you launch that into the community to constantly reinforce? It's, it's the product name. It's the Facebook group name. It's the core video content that he's saying the identity it's written in the emails. It's mentioned in the coaching calls. It's written in the Facebook posts. It's in the comment section. It's in the logo. It's in the merch. Everything is made to reinforce the identity because at its brand level, then it's the brand identity. It's the collective identity. And it just makes it so much easier. But first, you got to define your tribe a brand, right? Because if you, you can't have a strong community with the wrong people, you can't build this whole brand around something undefined or unclear or something that you don't even live and embody, right? There's so much nuance in just that first bit of what is the identity shift and so much messaging and nuance behind what does it mean? How do you communicate it? Who are we? Where are we going? What are we doing together? So that you go away from this me brand, the like, oh, I have this and I can teach this or I do this into like, this is what we're doing here. So that you send people on a member mission so they have an experience to do with like-minded people so that they want to wear and share and be a part of a community. So we are launching a program to help with this. And we've been working on it for months since I was in Mexico, we started this. And so it's basically our process of what we do uh, with one-on-one -on -one clients, but in a one-to-many model. So it's going to be a beta because it will be an evergreen course, but we want to make sure all of the pieces and processes are in place. And so it's called 90 Day Tribe, and we're going to be helping you build your tribe brand and launch this course membership, but this paid community of your content. And so We'll have more details coming out about that soon. Um, but if you want to hear a bit more about it, you can send us a DM, just say 90 day tribe, and we can talk about that. So yeah, you can't have a strong community with the wrong people. And so we found most people just figure out what they want to sell and then go sell it, put those customers into a community, hope they like each other. And then they need to just keep going and selling that thing or finding other things to sell. And then this community just becomes watered down with all these random people on different missions and different goals. And there's really no connection and similarity. So that's why there's no engagement. And it's what makes it a community, not a tribe. So in order to create your tribe, you need to start with the tribe brand because it needs to be identity-based. So we don't know how to launch anything until we create the identity-based branding. And then from there, it makes sense as to what content we're trying to create to get that result. And then it makes sense what we need to tell them to indoctrinate them into that community so they get that result. And then it's what do we say in the community and what we say often so that they can embody that new identity. And then there's the systems in place at the end. But in order to create your 90-day tribe, then it really starts by creating that tribe brand and then launching that into the world. So that's what we'll be doing, be doing over 90 days. And yeah, so if you want to join the beta, then just comment below with uh, more details. Just say tribe and we'll uh, we'll hit you up in the DMs and see what you're building. So that's our similarity systems. That's tribe. And that's what we're doing with or without you. So if you want branded customers, come hit us up. But until then, we'll, uh, we'll see you next week. See you in the community and keep building your tribe. So remember, it's always sunny when you're making money. All right. Cheers.